Hi, my name is Mary Wong, and I'm a registered traditional Chinese medicine practitioner and acupuncturist in downtown Toronto, founder of Alive Holistic Health, and author to Pathways to Pregnancy. And tonight, I have to say, this is my live post number 56, and I'm going to apologize ahead of time because we posted something else completely different. So now it's more like a surprise visit because I had someone really special lined up who you see before you, and her name is Carol Morley. Am I, am I pronouncing it right, your last yeah. name? Okay. And she's a naturopathic doctor in um, Canada. Well, in Burlington, is it? Mississauga. Mississauga. Oh, my goodness. So sorry. Anyway, that doesn't matter because what I'm excited about is that she wrote a book. Um, can you show it us, uh, everybody, how that book looks like? So it's called um, Delicious Detox. So imagine, you know, people talk about detox all the time, but making it delicious, that's even more important, right? So I'm really excited to have you here. So um, because it's become a, a very, very spontaneous event, and again, I apologize to those of you who are joining in thinking that it's about uh, bleeding. <laughs> or the post that I posted today is about bleeding and how it might not be over when it's um, during your two-week wait or during pregnancy. So this is a very pertinent conversation. However, I mixed myself up and it's actually going to be next week's topic and not tonight. And so I'm going to carry on with Carol here, Dr. Morley. And so can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your book and what we're going to talk about tonight? Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me on today. Um, I've been a, naturopath, a practicing naturopathic doctor for over 14 years in Mississauga. So I graduated from the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, CCNM, back in 2003. And as Mary said, I have published this um, cookbook, Delicious Detox, um, I guess back in 2011. And I've been helping families be proactive about their health for, like I said, over 14 years, whether it's optimizing fertility, talking about baby food introduction or weight loss. I, my passion is education. I love educating patients and giving my clients uh, the right tools to succeed uh, in, in achieving their inner health and wellness. So thank you again, Mary, for having me. And I've actually prepped a prepped a recipe um, to to do for your for your guests, and uh, we can chat about whatever else you'd like. <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm like thrilled that you did this because you know we can talk about a recipe, but we want the visuals, right? And especially when it's delicious, we have to see that. I wish I could taste it. I'll do it virtually. We'll pretend. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, let's get going. Let's see what you're doing. Okay, so just to give, uh, if somebody listening is watching or, or um, has my cookbook, Delicious Detox, it is on page 25. It's the warm, spicy sweet potato salad. And because we're we may be talking a little bit about fertility and uh, preconception potentially, I like this recipe because of the azuki beans in it. So if you're not familiar with the tzuki beans, I usually, sometimes I'll do dried beans, sometimes I'll, I'll buy the even organic uh, azuki beans. I love azuki because in TCM, Mary, as you know, they're so, so great for the kidneys and for the adrenal glands. So there's such a great bean for that reproductive fire, um, very nourishing and very supportive. Um, I like the even organic because the liner in the can is BPA free, which is nice. So BPA is bisphenol A, and uh, that is a known endocrine disruptor. So when we're talking about hormones, whether it's fertility or PMS or breast, um, you know, PMS like breast tenderness, um, we always can talk about endocrine disruptors like BPA, like different parabens. Parabens, um, you know, in the, in the media over the last uh, 10 years have been a known link to breast cancer, for example. So that's why I thought maybe I'll, I'll uh, show, show your, your guests um, this recipe. So I'll bring you guys over. This is my first time on Facebook Live, Mary. So oh, I mean, awesome. Great job. So I, while you're bringing us over, I have a question then. So, yeah. you know, I like to um, try to um, use dried beans but of course you know what we're busy 
we're working full time, we have a full life. And sometimes in a pinch, you just kind of need that pre-made stuff, right? So grabbing that organic can. So are we saying that, do you find typically all these organic products, will they be um, environmentally conscious and um, conscious about having the tin can be um, toxic free? Are they aware of that typically? Typically they are. I, I can't say every company is because I have seen organic beans that are canned that don't have the BPA free liner. So you just, you look, I mean, that is definitely, I would say a selling feature. So they're gonna mention that on their can, BPA free, which is nice. But more often than not, Mary, yes, you're right. Um, these companies do look to environmentally friendly, um, um, I guess, procedures. Yeah. Right. Because of course, you know, when you're cooking, a lot of people, I, I know, I, I don't know if you get this, but a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, organic costs more money or, you know, so it, I always try to say, but if, there, if, if there's more consciousness to it and if it's healthier, then it's probably well worth it, right? Especially if it can potentially disrupt your hormones and other things for future. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, if, if organic really is out of that price range, um, and you're busy and everything. The dried beans, what I would usually recommend to my patients is make a huge batch. Soak, soak a big pot overnight. You cook maybe four or five cups of it, and then you freeze in one cup portions. So then, you know what, when you're making this salad, you can defrost it the night before, or um, maybe you're making a, a bean soup or something like that, and you can grab that out of the freezer. So. You know, there, there are other options. It's just about being a little bit, uh, I guess, more mindful, prepping, planning, these kind of things. That's a really great idea. So then when you freeze, are you um, also advising what to freeze in? Like, you know, is that Ziploc freezer bag okay? Yeah, I mean, ideally, you know, you have that glass Tupperware. Where, where do I have my glass Tupperware here? Let's see. So something like this, <laughs> you know, you have this and you have your lid, you put your beans in there and there's, this is a two cup portion. So you could definitely do that. Um, you know, or yes, you do uh, like a Ziploc bag. It's not ideal, but again, if you're going through the trouble of doing a dried beans and cooking them, you do, you do what you can, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you, um, for those watching, then, you know, if you really want to set yourself up, then you could typically go to a store and they and buy these kinds of um, friendly products that you can put in the freezer. And I, I use glass myself. Um, I sometimes I use stainless steel, food grade stainless steel containers as well. So yes, there are options. And some, in fact, I found silicone bags as well that oh, you can freeze. That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. So what is this? Okay. So for the for the recipe, so easy. A couple of sweet potatoes. Um, diced and then a small red onion and if you've never roasted red onion it's absolutely dish delicious it gets really nice and sweet when you're roasting it and so I've roasted it already and I'm just going to put it in here in this uh, bowl and I've just I lined the baking sheet with parchment paper absolutely and so did you add stuff to it did you add olive oil or? Um, a touch of olive oil before I roasted it. And then here's a. Oops, you just cut out for a second. What did you just say? Yeah, an, an orange pepper and I just diced it up and threw that in the, in the salad as well. This is some cilantro. Okay. So just chopped up, put the cilantro in there. And... I'm just gonna grab the beans. <laughs> I do that all the time. I walk away. It's all good. <laughs> Looks good so far. It's making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you put the um, yams or uh, sweet potato in the in the oven? I did it for today. Um, I did it 425 degrees. Uh, for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So it's a pretty quick, quick, uh, quick thing. Okay, so I've got the beans, the sweet potato, 
the uh, cilantro in here. And then I'm just gonna quickly make the dressing. Ooh, so the dressing is, yeah, the dressing, I see Mary, I've got your book right here. <laughs> Thank you, great. It looks really good in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in my little chopper, I already have um, jalapeno pepper and for those listening, if you uh, like it a bit spicier, I would include in the jalapeno. But my kids are going to eat this tomorrow. So Sorry, I'm, you're cutting out again. What you're saying. Oh, the jalapeno. Okay, wait a second, Carol. You're frozen. You're frozen. Oh, there you are. Okay, there you are. So say it again. Okay. Um, you have jalapeno peppers. And what else did you say? And there's some garlic in here. Great. Okay. I love that thing, by the way. I have one of those. Oh, aren't they like, great? Thank you. It, oh. You know, the fingers all smell like garlic, and you do it, and it, it right? Like, yeah. no fuss, no mess. It, exactly. Invest in that. Sure. And then I'm just adding some lime juice in here. So the, the juice of one lime. And I'm just going to zip this. The oil. The oh, oil, okay. Yeah. Salt. Okay. Sea salt. If you never used herbamar, I love herbamar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some pepper, so super easy. And that's it. And then I'm just going to pour it over the salad. It's got a little kick to it then with the jalapeno. It, it does, yes. But this nice. is where you, you can really control, right? So with the jalapeno pepper, you just don't add the seeds, for example, or you add a little bit less of the jalapeno pepper. Right, right, yeah. I would add less. I would probably add no seeds. I mean. Yeah. And then that's it. And I'm just going to mix it up. And it's, it's a good one. Oh, nice. Yum. Okay, so are we having that for as our full meal? You could have that as a quick lunch. You could have that as a quick lunch for sure. Or you could have maybe a side of for dinner or something like that. You could have that plus a side of steamed broccoli, for example. You know, so I would still add another vegetable if it was going to be a bigger meal. But if you wanted to have or you're used to having a smaller meal, it's definitely a complete meal as is. Absolutely. So let's talk yeah. a bit about that because, of course, not everybody understands nutritional value and how to have a whole complete meal. So tell Absolutely. me about Yeah. So we have the adzuki beans in there. And whenever, and that's a key, um, a key part because that's the protein of the meal. And um, I think the, the thing that I see the most when I'm talking to clients is um, a lack of protein in their diet, whether they're coming in for, um, you know, women's health, fertility, poor energy, anxiety. A lot of it boils down um, from a nutritional perspective. It boils down to uh, balancing blood sugar levels and people aren't, aren't eating enough protein. So this is something um, something easy, uh, the azuki beans, so that's a great protein. The sweet potatoes, I mean, that's a great carbohydrate and also it's, it's a grain-free meal, right? A lot of people have trouble digesting grains or um, find them very phlegmy. Maybe they have gluten sensitivity or um, are just trying to cut down their, their wheat or gluten. Mm -hmm. So sweet potatoes are a great carbohydrate um, nice with a prebiotic, so it's great for the gut, and also great for gut health as well. Um, and of course, we have a red pepper, or sorry, an orange pepper, so just, you know, vegetable, a little bit more carb, and then your uh, onion, which again is like the sweet potato in that it's a prebiotic, so it really does feed that good bacteria in the gut, which is nice. So people are fearful of like taking extra estrogen and they. 
you're going to look at sweet potato and yam. Are they the same category? Is there any estrogenic qualities to it? Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not so concerned about a food source like sweet potato when it comes to estrogen and progesterone. I think when you're eating something like, you would have to eat so much sweet potato um, to have any kind of an effect like that. So, you know, I think, yeah, it's, it's a great food source. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Because again, a lot of people worry, right? And, and I, I think people always take it to the nth degree. And typically in research, what they do is, you know, when they're researching it, the load the, the, that they use is going to be huge amounts of it that can have that level, right? So we get scared off by food, which is really sad to me because, you know, sweet potato, yams, I think they're great, great sources, as, as you're mentioning right now. So thank you for explaining that thoroughly. And I hope that um, the viewers who are scared off by, you know, healthy food. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me what other recipes, what kinds of recipes are in your book? Is it more mm -hmm. are there desserts? Are there, you know, uh, starters or, you know, soups? What's in your book? Okay, so the whole idea behind Delicious Detox is I really, um, I love the idea of putting people on an elimination, essentially, an elimination diet. I hate using the word diet, but, um, you know, and so, it might be for two weeks, might be for three weeks, where we're maybe we're trying to figure out if they're sensitive to something, if they're allergic to something, maybe whatever is causing their unexplained bloating. Um, maybe we just want to have inflammatory foods that they're eating. So, you know, the book has 80 recipes that are essentially anti inflammatory. They have no gluten, dairy, sugar. Um, there's there's no nightshade vegetables again that inflammatory um, uh, group of, of vegetables there and there's meal plan there's a two week meal plan and two week shopping list um, that they you know people can follow to a T or you can just pick and choose different recipes um, and there's it ranges it has breakfast options it has soups salads um, main entrees that are uh, vegetarian based, so bean based, but then chicken recipes, some fish recipes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's nice. It's a little bit of everything um, uh, for for different meals of the day. So you know, oftentimes when we think of recipes, and this again back to the we are all working people, it, it can be a little bit of overwhelm. So. Are your recipes easy to make? Like, does it take lots of prep work? Yeah, that? great. I get that all the time um, because, I mean, that is one of the biggest concerns people have. I don't have enough time to prep, to plan, to chop up all these vegetables. And I'll tell you, Mary, like, I am not a chef by background. Um, the whole idea of this is, like, easy, quick the recipes that take the longest are the soup recipes and you can multitask while you're doing soups while the pot is on the stove um, because you know i mean soups take an, an hour or whatever uh to cook but everything else there honestly there's simple simple recipes the chicken nuggets is a fan favorite the chicken nugget recipes my kids love the chicken nuggets uh so you have like little pieces of chicken and the coating or the breading is uh, chopped up or in this little chopper uh, rice crackers with some parsley and some you know some sea salt pepper it's so simple and it just makes those chicken uh, little pieces nice and crunchy so it's that's a great simple recipe that's done in less than 20 minutes oh wow that's great okay yeah that's fantastic and you know see I actually do come of restaurant owners and so oh. we are used to making very um, intricate recipes but of course in our lives it's like oh we need to do simple things and sometimes it's hard for me to go simple right oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to trying some of these recipes out and maybe in the future you know I'll take some of my favorite recipes and I'll actually do it live as well. oh yeah that'd be great <laughs> we come back on the show and actually cook something else that would be fun too yeah, that would be great. That would be great. I love doing little cooking demos for people. And then people can really see it really is. 
Oh, you just cut out again. What did you say? Can you repeat that? Oh, people will then really realize it really is simple. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. We want to encourage so that, you know, let's make meal preparation a joy versus a chore. Right. And I think the more we get into a healthier way of eating, we're just more motivated to actually do that. And then, you know, learn ways to cut time and do some of that prep work. Or as you mentioned, you know, let's cook a whole whack of beans and then freeze them. That's a good idea. I haven't done that yet in freezing <laughs> a meal, but I, I, I'll now freeze my meals, right? Like I'll make that, like giant batches of meals and I put them into sizable containers enough for the family. Um, and it could be like four portions and which is awesome. So, you know, when I'm tight for time, I just go, okay, time to defrost that and cook it up in like five minutes. Right? So it doesn't have to be a chore. Yeah. Or the key is to make, in, you know, a bigger quantity, like the, there's a roast chicken recipe in the cookbook. And so, you know, whenever, and this is where you buy a good quality chicken, but you're buying a full chicken. So it makes sense financially as well. Um, and then you would hopefully have leftovers, you know, uh, from that. And then you use those bones and you're making like a bone broth or a chicken stock out of that. So I'm, I'm classic for having the slow cooker on at all times, uh, you know, with, with those bones and the water just kind of simmering in there. But you can, uh, yeah, you can, so you can do a lot. Okay, you know what? I have to tell you a very quick story because this just happened to me. So I'm known to make um, a bone broth every single week because we roast the chicken every week. So this weekend, for some reason, my and I have not been really, thank you for saying this. So for those of you that will one day hopefully be able to um, make bone broths, definitely use a slow cooker because I almost had a house fire. Oh Seriously. no, and I've been making soups for years and never had trouble. And for some reason, this time you know, you have to boil it and then you have to lower the heat for hours. So, and I've, I've always done cooktop because that's how I've been brought up. We just made it like that, right? And you just let it sit and, you know, you go about your business and you come back. Well, little did we know, we were watching a movie in the basement and I come back up and I smell smoke and I go and it was completely smoked, smoky. It was horrendous. I'm like, oh my gosh, if I've stayed another 10, 15 minutes, I might have had a house fire. <laughs> You had to open up the whole house, windows open, everything. So, yeah, the moral of the story, slow cooker is the best. And the kicker is that I actually have a slow cooker. And I even have a pressure that does all the slow cooking thing, too. So I have two of these things, and I've never made soups out of it. Oh, my so, gosh. There you go. There you go. So for any viewer, don't do it old school. We have slow cookers now, and then they won't break the bank. Buy one, invest in one, because they're great anyway. I've done other recipes in yeah. soup. So now we're going to do soups in. <laughs> yeah. Yes, perfect. And especially with the fall uh, fall season coming, slow cookers are great for soups and stews. You know, all those, whether it's chicken stews, beef stews, whatever, they're fantastic. They make the meat so tender, right? Do you have stews in your cookbook? Uh, I have a Moroccan stew. It's a Moroccan chickpea stew. Okay, awesome. but um, I don't have any. I don't have any chicken stew, but I do have a chicken stew in my sequel that I'm currently writing. Oh, I did not know. Okay, great. Yes. And and what's the title of that? Is it the more of the same thing, but just more? Yeah. So I have actually I have two two books that are um, I don't know about eighty percent finished. Um, one is a sequel to this one. And the other one is a baby food introduction uh, cookbook. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. I'd love to. You know what? Send it to me. I can edit it for you. <laughs> okay. That's perfect. <laughs> Being here, I like it's awesome. And um, I think it's almost time just because it's been 20 minutes and people have short attention span on Facebook. So yes, absolutely. Try this recipe out. Get your book. Put your book up again. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's funny? 
I need to put your book up, and I'm like, I don't have my book up to tell you. <laughs> so pick up your book. Oh, thank you. And pick up my book. Happy <laughs> talks, both of which you can find at um, well, uh, chat. Are you on chapters? No, Amazon. Uh, I'm on Amazon, and there's some health food stores that carry the book, and uh, my own website as well. So you can either get it at zawadahealth.com or delicious.com. Okay, super. Thank you so much. And maybe at the end, when you find uh, the post, you can actually click in your website and you okay. know, share all your um, clients and, and uh, then they'll see it as well. So Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much for being on the show. And again, next Wednesday, please join me where I will be talking about bleeding, I promise you. And <laughs> hopefully you can, won't be at the edge of your seat like panicking about seeing any kind of bleeding because you don't actually have to. There's lots of reasons why you can bleed without a habitual miscarriage or just like that, that inevitable demise. So let's chat next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be here, be square. Have a great evening. And thank you again, Carol. Take care. Thank you, Mary. Bye.